Hello, I'm Bruce Robertson from the Department of Classics at Mount Allison University in Canada, and this video is an introduction to editing for the Open Greek and Latin project using my web software called LACE. In another video, I've outlined the Open Greek and Latin workflow, but here we're going to focus on the editing step. I'll show you how to navigate in LACE, and then the three tasks needed to edit a text, which are zoning, correction and verification, and finally tagging. And if there's a bit of time left over, I'll show you what the output looks like. The home page is a list of editable text, as you can see. Now, if we're working on the problemata of Aristotle, we'd look for it here under author and title. Because it's possible to have then more than one image set representing one book, it's handy to also know that there's a unique code for each image set. And this appears when we mouse over the bibliographical information. You can see it in a small pop-up there by the mouse. Clicking on the title takes us to the editing view for the second image in the image set. You can see from the two in blue on the paging widget at the middle top of the page that this is where we are. Note that this image set paging number probably isn't the same as the volume page number. Now we can page forward uh, using the paging widget. We'll go forward 20 and that'll probably get us into the body of the text. In fact, here we are at uh, volume page number eight, which is image number 22. Another way to navigate a volume is with the views available from this drop-down menu. In the Run Accuracy view, the volume is represented by a horizontally oriented rectangle. Now, it comprises as many narrow vertical rectangles as there are pages in the image set. Each of these is colored so as to represent the accuracy of that page, ranging from black for a total mess through deep red and then all the way to blue for well uh, well recognized pages. This volume is on the blue end so it's very accurate. The pop-up beside the mouse as you're mousing over this strip gives the number of the corresponding image and so you can navigate it to it by just clicking there. The run editing view gives the same strip style view, but coloring the pages according to how much they've been edited. Here we see that almost no editing activity has taken place, except that there's a page that's in white, which shows that it's missing output, and another that has only a bit of editing done to it. And that's the 20th image, the one that we looked at at the very beginning. Finally, the Run Info menu item gives more details about uh, this particular OCR output run. So now that we know how to get to a page on LACE, the next step is to start editing it by selecting page zones. We'll use the first page of Ruel's edition of Aristotle's Problemata as an example. On the left of this page edit view is the picture of the page that was processed with optical character recognition, and on the right is the output of the OCR. The zone controls are the three buttons above the page image on the left. Start by selecting the type of zone, and then simply drag a rectangle to create the first zone of this type on the page. Clicking in a zone highlights the words in the OCR output that this zone comprises. Any number of zones can be made, either of the same type, to show reading order of columns, for instance, or to separate various types of text from each other. I've just zoned the apparatus criticus of this page. Even if we aren't going to correct this, it might be handy to have this zone available, so check with your instructions carefully to find out what areas you should zone. To clear a zone, Select it by clicking in it, then press the delete key, keeping in mind that this might change the reading order. Note that the zone you select tends to snap outward to the furthest dimensions of the words it intersects with. Put another way, you can't make a zone that cuts a word's bounding box in half. So if the OCR engine has misidentified a bounding box, this can make strange effects. Okay, now that we've defined the zones of the page, the next step is to correct the errors in the OCR output, correct and verify the text. 
This is done on the right side of the page. Each of the words on that side is editable. When you click on a word, the image of that area pops up below for easier verification, and the corresponding area on the left side is highlighted in blue. You correct a word by changing its text, and you verify words by pressing return on your keyboard. When you verify a word, it turns blue on the right-hand side. The editor will then select the next unverified word on the page, and the process continues. The color coding of the word indicates words that are likely to be a problem. They're colored towards the red end of the spectrum. But even green words, which are ones found in a dictionary, can be wrongly recognized, and it's your job to verify everything, especially checking for errors in accents. For instance, if this word were recognized as T with a grav accent and not a Q, it would still be highlighted green. As I hit return to verify these words, the web page goes gray for a second as the server confirms my verification. Your goal should be to verify every word in the zones for which you want an accurate transcription. Here, the primary text zone. Another verification method is to read the whole line carefully and use the verify whole line item in the context menu that pops up when we right click or on a Mac control click in a word. This is useful when you have highly accurate OCR like this. If there are mistakes regarding which characters on, are on either side of a hyphenated form, don't worry about that. As long as the dehyphenated form is proper, we're okay. We correct the text just by merely deleting wrong characters and uh, typing in the right ones in their place. The next page illustrates some typical problems you'll encounter in editing. Many of these have been caused by someone writing over and around the text, thus confusing the OCR engine. Though here we have a word missing its capital letter, a common problem. Here we just need to add a space. Note that you can split the characters inside a single colored rectangle like this if necessary. So here we'll correct and insert spaces all through this erroneous string of text. When an entire line is missing, we can add it with the context menu. Then we'll type in the correct form and hit return as always to verify. And we'll clean up the dirty line above, removing all of its characters. We'll speed up the video of me editing more of the lines in the primary text zone of this and the previous page. Notice that the blue progress bar advances as we do our work, showing how much of the page has been verified or edited. Finally, we need to show the computer where and how our text is subdivided by tagging it with canonical references. 
We do this also with the context menu that appears when we right-click on a word. From it, we select Insert Ref Before. Two text fields will appear, one to identify the work, and another to label the section. Unless the name of your work is already in the first field, type it there to select it from the drop-down list that will appear. Now type the section identifier in the second field. To confirm our work, we'll hit return, and the entry will collapse into this little bookmark symbol. We can always mouse over it to see in the pop-up what section it represents. After this first one, when we make other references, the work text field will be entered for us, and we only need to change it if we change works. A wrong reference can always be deleted by hitting the X button beside its bookmark symbol. Finally, even though LACE will save all of your work on its server, you can save a local copy of your work by selecting Download ZAR Backup of Editing from the context menu. This will save a file on your own computer. So if you've learned now how to navigate LACE, how to select page zones, correct errors, and tag the text with canonical references. If you want to stick around for a bit, I'll show you what the data looks like when it's outputted from LACE. To do this, we select Pre-Check and Download TEI file from the context menu beside the title of the work. The Pre-Check performs certain sanity checks, like uh, ensuring that there aren't duplicate references. We select Generate TEI file, and within a certain period of time, a zip file is downloaded for us. Inside this are TEI XML files for each of the works that we've tagged. Let's look at this on the command line. You can see that the header is uh, filled in with all the bibliographical information. This will need to be edited a bit, but there's a good start here. And then further down, you'll find the structured TEI of what you have corrected, tagged, and zoned. You might notice that at the bottom of this last section, there's some bad output. This is because we did not verify and correct everything in this section. Remember, whatever is zoned and tagged will be in the output, even if you don't correct it. Thank you for watching this video today, and I hope you enjoy your work adding to the world's library of free and open ancient texts.